Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, September 25th. Okay, so we have the moon in her rulership in Cancer Energy here all day. We just had the last quarter moon pop off in this Cancer Energy here yesterday afternoon, which of course was a pivot point to realize what is working, what is not, what we're building towards and what we're deconstructing. And of course, putting into perspective where old cycles are definitely coming to a closure, coming to a finality. With the moon still in her rulership, we're definitely introverted. We're definitely trying to stick to what is tried, tested, true, and familiar. We are definitely more hypersensitive than normal, but we're more passive aggressive, more on the defense, let's say, than anything else. And although we are overly attached to particular chapters and themes of the past, we are essentially, now that we're in Libra energy, trying to balance those particular scales out. So today is actually the last day that Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, will be in his rulership here in Virgo energy. We are going to watch Mr. Mercury shift into Libra energy here on the 26th. There is a astro forecast out here for your listening pleasure. Of course, download the Libra season e-guide if you haven't already. And this is going to wrap up the astro events for September. So if you want to take a re-listen to your September Zodiac forecast to understand where Mercury moving into Libra energy is going to influence you the most, I would definitely recommend you do just that. So there are eight different aspects taking place here today. Four of them are going to involve the moon. I say that in a very interesting tone because very rarely do we have a half and half split. Now, the other aspects that do not involve the moon here today are definitely going to challenge our thoughts, our perspectives, challenge our emotional state, and really put us in a good situation to realize from an empowered type of perspective what it is that we are currently closing. With that being said, we kick the day off with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in the final degrees of his rulership here in Virgo energy, directly opposing sitting across from Neptune. So Neptune is currently retrograde in his placement of power in Pisces energy. And as we know, Neptune is at the final degrees, thus Mercury coming to the final degrees of Virgo energy. We have the Virgo and Pisces axis being triggered and activated. Mercury rules over our logical, practical intellect. Neptune rules over our imagination, our creativity, our intuition. There is going to be an opposition because again, they're sitting across from each other in the Zodiac wheel and an opposition offers us an opportunity to balance out these energies. So we have Mercury and Virgo energy, logical, practical, rational thinking, the truth, the matter of facts, if you will, while the confusion, the delusion, the non-matter of facts reign supreme under that Neptune retrograde and Pisces energy. The lines of truth versus non-truth are definitely going to be blurred. The blurriness is definitely going to continue between what is actually obtainable, what is actually achievable, and what is just pure hopes, wishes, and dreams. There is going to be a little bit of a deception type of energy where we're really not seeing things clearly. Again, we're still in eclipse season, so we cannot expect to see things clearly. But I'm going to say that the scales are going to tip more in the favor of delusion and confusion over the logic and practicality, the matter of the truth. We are going to teeter totter through this particular, is this true or does I just want it to be true? Um, is this achievable or do I just wish that it was achievable? We're going to teeter totter with that throughout the, mo the most of the day. And this is about, you know, fact or fiction. This is about reality or fantasy. This is about us really challenging our viewpoints in order for us to see ourselves, the matter of the facts that we're dealing with, the options, the opportunities from a different viewpoint, from a different lens, from a different set of eyes. 
Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in Scorpio energy now, and she is going to be making a positive interaction with the sun in Libra energy. So as you know, Venus floating through this deep, dark energy of Scorpio, we are recognizing our deepest, darkest passions, desires, wants, needs, and equally, we are figuring out where we have some old pain and trauma programming, kind of preventing us from being forthcoming with these new wants, needs, and desires, these new realizations. We are realizing where it is that we do have some fears, some doubts, some insecurities kind of working against us at this particular juncture. But as this is a positive interaction, especially with the sun shining a very bright light in this Libra energy, this is going to illuminate for us where the scales are actually tipped. Meaning, are we tipping the scales more in favor of the excitement, the passion, the desires that we actually want to pursue? Or are we allowing the scales to be tipped in the favor of the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that are going to prevent us from actually going after what it is that we identify that we actually want to pursue? Because this is a positive interaction, it's probably going to be a huge light being Sean, if you will, on our relationship dynamics, because again, Libra season, yes, the relationship with thyself and how the relationship with thyself dictates the relationship dynamic with others. We are trying to figure out what we have to be doing for ourselves versus what it is that we have to be doing for others, where it is that we have our own wants, needs and desires to honor and where it is that the wants, needs and desires of the team, of the group, of the partnership kind of trumping what it is that we've been doing for ourselves. Either way, there's going to be an aha moment of where it is that our heart is tipping us in the favor of honoring ourselves and really being bold and brave and courageous enough to do the shadow work to put an end to the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that are preventing us from going after this new passion, this new desire, this new want and need for us to have happiness and joy and safety, security and stability, not only within ourselves, not only within our relationship dynamics, but in our day to day life as well. The moon in cancer energy going to come up to bump into team up with conjunct Mars. Mars is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our passion, our action, our desire, even our anger. He is not in his greatest place here in the Cancer energy because we can't go after what it is that we want in a linear fashion. We have to act like the crab, such as Cancer is, and we're kind of, you know, walking sideways, gaining closer proximity, but not a direct path towards where it is that we want to be. Mars in this cancer energy is only taking action and making moves if it ensures our safety, security, stability, if it ensures us preserving what it is that we've already built, what it is that we've already created. A conjunction is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. And so the ending, I would say, is the realization of where it is that we're overly attached to situations and circumstances of the past what we thought we would be experiencing, who we thought we would be experiencing them with at this particular juncture. Again, it's kind of like romanticizing the past, what could have been instead of actually looking at what currently is. The beginning part coming out of this is a new warrior type of mood and attitude to put ourselves first, to nurture ourselves, nourish ourselves back to a place of health and wellness to really protect ourselves as we're trying to figure out this new version of self, this new want, need, and desire, this new expression of this new version of self wanting to be animated through the physical form and what it is that we have to do to reassure ourselves that we're on the right path, we're in the right mood, we're in the right vibe. We have to take a little bit more of an inventory, if you will, on what is worthy to us, what we truly value, what we're willing to fight for. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. This is going to bring on a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of confusion, I would say. Again, reminder, Uranus's retrograde in Taurus energy is supposed to be highlighting for us where it is that we're overly attached, holding on to the past when we know damn well that we've kind of oh, grown it. We've learned all that we can learn from it. But many of us hold on to the old, waiting for something new to knock on our door before we're willing to release our particular hold on what once was. Now, 
The moon interacting with Uranus in this way, definitely going to be a little bit jittery. Again, Uranus usually affects our central nervous system. Usually he brings an aha moment. Usually he brings an epiphany, but he's thinking so far into the future about what it is that we want to break free of, where it is that we want to create something new, that the moon being overly attached to the past and this cancer energy, we're kind of feeling torn. We're not even in the present moment right now because emotionally speaking, we're afraid to move on. We're afraid to boss up. We're afraid to actually build towards something new. And futuristically speaking, there are so many items on our to-do list. There's so much accountability and responsibility on our part to build and create a realm and reality that not only looks good, that feels good, that we're just not feeling well equipped or well prepared at this present moment to do any of that. So we start getting a little bit wah, wah. We start getting a little bit down on ourselves and definitely create more anxiety than there needs to be. Then we have Mars semi-squaring Uranus. This is definitely going to be a challenging aspect. This is going to further intensify the, let's call it restlessness, the ants in our pants, the impatience that we're having, the impulses that we're trying to resist. We're recognizing where it is that we feel trapped in our lives. We're recognizing where it is that our back is against a wall, where we don't have choices and options. And all we want to do is fight for our freedom, fight for liberation, fight for us to essentially break away from this particular life path, this, li this life cycle, and initiate something new. So of course, the ants in our pants, the restlessness, the impulsivity, the impatience doesn't feel good. However, we could learn a lot because what we're going to learn from this situation is what we actually are excited to do, what we actually want to pursue what is actually worthy of our time, our energy, and our effort to really kind of rise up in, in order to prepare, again, cultivating the inner fire, spark, and flame needed in order for us to get to the point where we're ready to boss up to new roles and responsibilities, to slam the door, nail that sucker shut on the past, and start building towards something better. The moon in Cancer energy, then going to try and beautiful interaction, with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. So this is water on water action. We love a trine. A trine pushes us in the right direction, especially with water energy. It cleanses us. It purifies us. It kind of, I'm going to say, you know, dusts us off from some of the heaviness, the weight that we've been setting in. Then it refreshes us refreshes our emotions, our soul, our spirit. It regenerates a new excitement, new creativity within us. Saturn, of course, anxiously wanting to build new structures, new foundations for this new realm, this new reality that we're anxiously building in our mind space. We want to bring it to life. So emotionally speaking, the moon in this cancer energy, we're starting to realize where new chapters are ending. And guess what? We're not sad about it. We're starting to realize where new roles and responsibilities are asking for us to boss up. And guess what? We're not sad about that either. We are in touch with our emotions. We're in touch with our intuition and we're in touch with the vision that we now want to start manifesting for ourselves in a futuristic realm and reality. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane at the final degrees of this Virgo energy. So the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They're working together. They're on the same page. Emotionally speaking, the cancer energy wants to build in our ability to take care of ourselves, to look good, to feel good, to feel safe and secure, to feel protected, to feel like we're on the right path, to feel like we're kind of nurturing ourselves, especially this new version of self, back to a place of health and wellness. Mercury, of course, in this Virgo energy is all about improvement, all about a more positive mind space, all about what it is that we could be doing for ourselves to take care of ourselves in a much better way, mind, body and soul. The last aspect that we have going on here today is a very interesting one. It is between Saturn, the Lord of Karma, and Pluto, the Great Transformer. So let's just backtrack for two seconds. This is the second time that these guys are coming together. So of course, Mr. Saturn, he's retrograde now in Pisces energy. Mr. Pluto, he is retrograde at the final 
critical crisis karmic degree of the Capricorn energy. This is the second of three aspects. The first one took place back in May of 2024. The third and final aspect between these two are going to take place January of 2025. Saturn is responsible for wrapping up this karmic chapter, this karmic cycle. Pluto is responsible for completely deconstructing and destroying all of the old systems, the old structures. Basically, these guys coming together in a semi-square, which again highlights tension and conflict, this is going to illuminate where it is that we're currently in the midst of a power struggle. Now, this power struggle could be between the old version of self, the new version of self. It could be between your heart and your head. It could be between the old world ending and the new world not yet beginning. It could be between you, someone else, or you in the greater, grander collective. Again, society at its finest. Either way, we're recognizing where it is that we feel trapped, where it is that we feel blocked, where it is that there is a need for change, but we don't know how to make those changes. There's an element of frustration, an element of just, at times, pure anger of not being able to see the forest past the trees. May I remind you, we are in eclipse season. If you are not confused at this particular juncture, you should be. If you are not exhausted at this particular juncture, you should be. If you are just hella out of shape, not realizing where it is that your attention needs to be channeled right now, that's exactly where it should be. And so this particular interaction, definitely going to feel heavy, going to feel weighted. It's supposed to because this is the final hurrah. We have to understand that the Next aspect between these guys, the third one that takes place in January, we have to understand that Pluto is going to be in Aquarius energy permanently at that time. And so this is the last hurrah of Pluto being retrograde in this Capricorn energy. He's about to go direct here early October. And from early October to mid-November, this is the final time that we have to do a clean sweep of the old world of the old structures, of the old version of self, the old karma that the old version of self had created. This is definitely going to put into perspective, again, the frustrations, where we feel trapped, where we feel blocked, because that in turn is going to help us, again, build, cultivate this inner spark, this inner fire, this inner flame, this inner warrior spirit that is definitely needed for this chapter, we are about to bust out. We're about to initiate something new. We are going to face blockages and challenges right out of the gate. We have to be fired up to a particular point that we will not back down when we bang our head against a wall. So Saturn and Pluto, they're semi-squaring. They're creating tension and conflict in order for you to see where it is that your back is against the wall, where it is that you're still blocked, where it is that you're still trapped in order for you to realize that this is the area that needs all your time, energy, and attention. This is the area of your life that needs to be fixed, healed, and resolved. And again, not going to happen overnight, but this is the beginning of realizing where it is that we have to build up our warrior spirit to engage in the battle that we know we're going to have to fight when we get that green light go ahead. <music>